Uh, Roy, so we are at this point where we can start building our first Django view. Um, we're going to start with a simple function-based view just to get warmed up. So we have our HTML, we have our static files. Now we need to tell Django to grab it. So two files control this grabbing situation. Views is something that is holding our logic. So how do we grab it? What do we do there? What's happening in the background? And then URLs file is kind of saying, okay, if a user is doing something like website, um, domain slash, I don't know, um, Marek, it's supposed to take me somewhere. If I do nothing, if I just go like website slash nothing, it should take me to somewhere. So right now we're seeing this because Django by default has this little thing that if there is nothing in URLs, it's gonna show you this. But if we tell Django what to do when it sees nothing after the, the website name, the main URL, um, base URL it's called, um, then it's gonna show whatever we tell it to show. So let's start with the view. And by the way, best practice for Django, always start with models. But because we don't need any models for website app, we I know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use any models so I'm that's why I'm not going to models first but the kind of rule of thumb is you start with models and you build around models because models is what controls the database you want your apps to kind of operate around your data as we all know IT is all about data so we kind of it's it makes sense to start with data you know what's gonna be stored for this app what kind of information you want to store and then what has to happen around that data to visual visualize it or to use it to whatever. Anyway, so we are in views. So that's uh, website views. And I'm gonna start with a very simple function-based view. Uh, and I'm gonna call it uh, just index. And every function-based view that we want to use for displaying something using Django accepts request argument. So you always have to put that in there because that's how Django is built. It needs to have this request argument there, uh, which will be then injected with its own request that Django is using for sending information about the uh, HTTP requests. And so what we want to do, I'm going to just use this render that was, uh, by the way, by default, put in the views file. And I'm just going to return render. Um, what does it, what is it looking for? PyCharm is telling me, okay, first I have to put in request. Okay, so that's something that is being injected here and then it's just using this in here uh, in render. Uh, the next one is template name. So it knows Django by default in settings. You can see that templates are in templates. Okay, base there, templates. So it's gonna look in this folder. So as we open this folder, there are no subfolders yet. So all we need to say is the template is called base HTML and PyCharm knows what Django is going doing there. So it's kind of cool to use PyCharm with Django because it, it's so smart. It knows the structure of Django. So it helps you to, to, uh, to make sure that you, you're not making any mistakes. You can just double click this and it fills out um, the rest. If I had some folders here, it would pick it up and you would be able to use uh, autocomplete uh, with this. Okay, is that it? Do we need to add anything else? We can context, but I'm gonna leave it blank for now. Uh, as you can see, PyCharm is telling me, hey, you're you're uh, missing a new line at the at the very end. Here we go. Now we have Pythonic structure. It was the same here. There was no uh, two line breaks here. So it's going to tell you, hey, PEP8 dictates that you're supposed to keep two lines here. Okay, so we have our views file done. So now we are ready to build the URLs file. Okay, so see you there. Bye-bye.